International Collaborations in Education, or Ice Age Project Advocacy, by Brett Samantha Dooley, for ESTEM 6393, with Dr. Childs. Statement of the Problem Globalization of the economy and job force has changed the factors that will affect the ability of our children, current K-12 students, to get jobs. The three most prescient factors that will influence job availability and opportunities for them are global migration, the flattened economy, and global climate change, according to Mencilla and Jackson, 2011. Statement of the Problem In California, 45% of K-12 students live in households where English is either not spoken or is not the primary language, according to Torlakson, 2011. The California Department of Education has now included language about global competency within the expectations for graduating seniors, according to the Curriculum Framework and Evaluation Criteria Committee in 2015. The California Department of Education has also recommended that students be proficient in at least one language other than English before they graduate, according to the Curriculum Development and Supplemental Materials Commission in 2003. Statement of the problem continued. Students now need a means of interacting with those from other countries within the school context to gain an understanding of how they think about global issues and significantly how their views differ from those from students abroad. Thus enters the Ice Age Project. <clears throat> the purpose of the research will be to complete a few collaborations and to determine what leads to a successful project and to what gains are made by the students. The research questions. There are a couple of primary questions for early stage implementation. They are, first, what makes a second a collaboration successful? And second, what affective gains are made by students in terms of A, learning science content, B, growth in their interpersonal skills, and C, awareness of the non-U.S. perspectives. Data collection will be done in three primary ways to enable triangulation. These are observations, interviews, and collections of artifacts. <clears throat> The methods include, for the observations, weekly observations of the class in California and observations done as possible through the digital video conferencing with the class overseas. Interviews with the teachers, both the foreign and domestic teachers, will take place at the minimum at the beginning and end of the project, more frequently if it's deemed necessary. Artifacts will be collected from the students along the way as appropriate. These artifacts can include their research notes, the essays that they're writing, graphs, tables, charts, or sketches of animals. And meetings with the teachers will be done either weekly or bimonthly as needed. There are four primary stakeholders. They are the museum educators and staff, the museum director, the teachers, and of course the students. The museum educators will be getting access to halfway completed exhibits. They'll be getting a body of text and diagrams and sketches that they can use to finish the exhibit design. They'll also get goodwill with the local school districts and possibly good media attention. The museum director will also benefit from the good exposure in the media, as well as the benefit of having a satisfied board. <clears throat> the teachers get the opportunity to take part in a global collaboration, which means that they'll get ahead of the global competency requirements coming from the state, and they get free assistance from a museum educator with participating in a global collaboration, which was frequently the first one with which they've been involved, 
and with the software involved in taking part in the partnership collaboration, such as digital video conferencing software and software to enable asynchronous work like the Google Suite. The students will get the opportunity to take part in the global collaboration. They get to meet new people and work on their interpersonal skills. They get to learn about a new culture and possibly a new language, depending on where their international peers are located. And they get to create an exhibit to be proud of that they can share with their peers and their family. Strategic plan. SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bounded. Specifically, this collaboration is a single collaboration between two schools. <clears throat> it's measurable in that interviews, observations, and artifacts can be collected. It's attainable as, as a similar project has been done in the spring and thus can be done again. It's relevant because the inclusion of global competency is a strategic goal for the California Department of Education and thus is timely. And it's time bounded in that this collaboration will take place within the course of a single semester. Plan evaluation. Success of the Ice Age project <coughs> can be determined by marketing such as it does with other recurring programs. The museum should be marketing the Ice Age project like they do in class trips and field trips to the museum as well as through their social media. Success <coughs> can also be determined <coughs> through how many schools we get interested in joining collaborations as well as how many of the teachers involved with Past collaborations look to join future collaborations as well. It's a good sign that both the domestic and foreign teachers from the spring collaboration are interested in participating in another collaboration this coming fall semester. <clears throat> Finally, success can be determined by the publication of peer-reviewed abstracts about the Ice Age project as the researcher attends conferences such as the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology Conference in Albuquerque, New Mexico this October, and ultimately by the publication of peer-reviewed papers and journals. Organization impact. The initial impact will be fairly small. There are two participating classes with about 30 students each, so 60 students and two teachers will bear most of the gains. The students, based on the collaboration in the spring, will gain scientific knowledge specifically about Ice Age animals, exhibit experience in that they'll see how the research that they do gets changed into text for an exhibit at a museum, look at growth in their interpersonal skills, which was probably the biggest gain that they made in the collaboration in the spring. They'll enhance their technology skills using the digital video conferencing software and Google Slides and Google Docs for asynchronous communication. <clears throat> They'll also get to connect with a different culture and possibly another language. The impact will grow as more teachers come on board. In the spring, we had just one collaboration, two teachers, about 60 students. We're going to have two or three collaborations taking place this fall, so we'll have up to 90 students being involved and six sets of teachers, or six, three sets of teachers, six teachers total. And as we have more success and share this project, other small museums may join in as well. <clears throat> the logic model that you see has the inputs, which are time at the school by the researcher, the teacher devoting time to the project, technology at the school being present, student effort in doing the research and writing, 
and the WebQuest webpage that will be the impetus for the research that the students do. The outputs include the class research, weekly meetings with the teachers, and of course the class project. The outcomes include short, medium, and long-term goals. <clears throat> the short-term outcomes are meeting the weekly goal for communication between students, foreign and domestic. The weekly goals for that we establish for the students in terms of their writing and project completion, and the bi-weekly meetings with the teacher. The median goals include completing the exhibit project and the interviews with the teachers. And the long-term goal is ultimately to have globally competent students who have long-term retention of the experience. There are a couple of assumptions that teachers will stick with the program once they begin and that there is administrative support for the teachers and for the researcher. And external factors that can influence the project are internet functioning properly at both schools, which occasionally can be a problem, laptops and tablets staying in working order so that the students can continue their research and their collaborations, and both teachers staying on board. Conclusions. Globalization of the economy has led to the need for global competency among K-12 students. The Ice Age project works to break the surface of global collaborations between schools in the United States and internationally. The initial impact will be small but may increase rapidly as the program expands. And here are the references.